Hello again, Internet. My name is Zach Finfrock, and I'm the co-host of Mad Monster Lab. And on today's episode, we're going to show you guys how to do awesome cuts and lacerations. Like this! Ah! Oh, God! It hurts! Ah! And scene. See, that's how you do it in a movie. So, Zach, how many times have you seen a cut or laceration in the movie? What? I don't know. Why would I keep track of that? 634. Wait, have you been keeping track of how many times I've seen cuts in a... That seems like a really high number. That doesn't sound... How did you do that? Science! Ralas, how are you going to do this effect on this episode? Actually, it's quite simple. We're gonna start off with easy cuts and lacerations using just blood or makeup for color. Then we're gonna move on to three-dimensional things with latex and tissue, and we're even gonna get into state-of-the-art modern technology with silicone-based cuts. Awesome. Let's start the process. All right, everybody, we're here for the build of cuts and lacerations. Lacerations. <laughs> we're gonna be uh, messing up Giles today. He has volunteered to be the victim or the actor, or the perform I don't know, victim, I like victim, we're gonna go with that. I'm gonna show you how to do different cuts, starting off with some easy, simple ones, and working our way up to more complex ones, and by the end of it, he's gonna be one f***ed up looking All right. To start with, we're gonna be using some basic cream liners, cream colors, it's just a cream-based makeup, nothing fancy, and a small, flat, synthetic brush. A lot of times when you see your favorite action stars and stuff in movies and they're in war scenes or battle scenes or they're running through woods or there's glass breaking around them, they get these little cuts and stuff like on Die Hard you got Bruce Willis with a cut on his forehead or you'll have Tom Cruise with a small cut on his cheek or his chin. Believe it or not, those are very simple painted on cuts that are an illusion. See most cameras and movies and stuff that you see are actually 2D and they're filmed in 2D with a camera that's just one lens. And with that, we can actually trick the eye into thinking something's 3D. Even 3D cameras are just one camera with one lens. They just combine the two and then trick your eye again. So this effect still works. So I'm going to take just a little bit of red on my brush. It's kind of a deep maroonish red. And I'm going to do a line right here on Jal's brow. Just like that. Now, in order to make this sell it as a real cut, I have to make it look like it's got a little bit of swelling. So I'm actually taking the brush and I'm wiping off a lot of that makeup on this wax paper palette here. And uh, you can get that at Friends. That's where I picked it up. And um, they have different sizes you can get. And then I'm going to go ahead just about a centimeter away from that cut. I'm going to take this makeup and just kind of smear it around. I'm going to do that on both sides. And up around. Just a little bit of makeup there. And I'm blending it out. And you can see already that the illusion that works really well with red makeup, and red in particular because it is in our skin, is that the skin here, right there, it looks lighter than the skin here. But you and I both know that that's not the case. I didn't put any makeup over here to make it darker. It's exactly the same. But the illusion is with that dark line of red and then this lighter blended line of red, it creates the illusion that this skin is lighter than this skin, making it look swollen and inflamed. It's just an optical illusion. And it works really well. So nine out of 10 times, whenever you see that action star leading man in a fight or uh, he's running through uh, the woods or there's broken glass around him or he gets out of a car accident and he has a little cut like this, it's just painted on just like that. Now to set the makeup, because it is a cream based and oil based makeup, we don't want it to move around a lot. We're going to use a little powder. This is a disposable powder puff. You can use it on the same actor over and over again. You just put in a little Ziploc baggie, put their name on it, you can use it all day. I'm going to put a little powder on my hand. It's a no color powder or translucent powder. And we just rub it in. And we're going to pat this right on. Just press it. And what's happening is the powder is absorbing 
I mean the oil from the makeup, and keeps it from moving. And I'm just using the side of the powder brush to brush off the excess. So that sets it and it'll keep it from moving and keep it there all day long. For an added touch of realism to this, we're going to take a little bit of blood paste for the taste. No. And we're going to take a little bit of that and we're going to put this into the brow. And we'll even put a little bit right onto the cut. It gives it a little bit of gloss and a little bit of blood. The camera can pick it up if Jazz turns his head a little bit. Sometimes a little bit of light will just catch it and you'll get a little glint off of it. And, you know, give us your best leading man kind of squinty eye. There you go. Okay, as you can see, a simple painted on cut with a little blood paste is very effective and will do the trick. In fact, a lot of people would try and take the time and effort and money to build up a three-dimensional cut when a simple 2D cut is going to achieve the job faster and for less money and have a great effect. In fact, in most of your action hero movies, this is what it is 9 out of 10 times, believe it or not. All right, now, I was asked one time by a director, hey, we need a little cutter and Nick. And I was like, oh, let me I go back to the trailer and get my makeup. He's like, no, well, you've got 30 seconds. And I was like, ooh, 30 seconds. So I just had this idea. I knew my red trick. So I just took a little bit of blood paste, just like so, and I just dragged the spatula across, and I did a little line like that. And then I took some of that, just smeared it off on my hand, and I came here, and I did that same trick with just some blood paste. And I'm gonna do it here, and smear that out. And I was able to get almost the same kind of look with just a little blood paste. If I wanted to, I could take a little bit of water and blend it out even more. And we got a little nick on the chip. Real simple, just like that. If you would turn your head, Giles, you see you get a similar effect with just blood paste. So in a pinch, if you're in a real hurry, you can take this blood paste, you can create cuts and wounds and stuff like that, even a bullet hole. Just put some blood paste on a little right around it and go with it. Okay? So the next thing we're going to do is a little more complicated version of the same thing. We're going to do a little more intense cut. I'm going to use some rubber mask grease paint. Rubber mask grease paint was that Kryolan palette which had all the colors on it that I was showing you guys. I just scooped it out and put it in a smaller palette because, hey, it fits in my makeup kit and it makes me cooler than you. All right, so this is a similar color to that. I like the color. It's kind of a deep red color, kind of maroonish. And I'm just going to paint a line on here. I'm going to make it a little wavy. And this is all about highlight and shadow to create a wound. And we're going to push the limits of what you really can get away with with a painted on cut or wound. I'm going to take this and thin it out, but also using a little bit of alcohol. You can thin out rubber mask grease paints with a little bit of alcohol. This is a 99% isopropyl alcohol. And you can see I can actually turn this rubber mask grease paint almost into a watercolor. And that is really helpful a lot of times. Now the alcohol might make his eyes water a little bit, so I'm letting him know I'm using alcohol by his eyes. The other thing that it does is it lets the makeup dry very quickly. Because as the alcohol evaporates, it just leaves a little bit of the makeup behind. Now once again, you can see that this looks lighter than this. We've got that going on. It's a wonderful illusion, creates a swelling. You can also see how it kind of dries there on the palette because of the alcohol and helps it stay in place. I'm going to do a little bit on the top, and I want to follow that line I had. So I'm actually going to put a little bit here. And a little bit here. And close your eyes for me, Jazz because I'm going to be working by his eye right here. I just don't want to push it. So you can see how we've got swelling in the edge of that cut. Now I want to deepen that cut. So I'm going to go back over to my rubber mask grease paint palette. I'm going to take a little bit of black. I don't want too much. I'm going to thin it out with some alcohol. 
So I got a little black going on there, almost like a watercolor. And I'm going to come into these areas that I want to deepen with a little black. Now notice the light's coming from above, so I'm putting the shadow right underneath that and letting it fade out towards the bottom. And it's adding some extra depth. And I'm being very sparing with the amount of makeup that I'm using. Cool. And you can take a look at that right now and just see how that extra black added that greater depth in there. The last thing that I'm going to do before any blood is once again powder it. Remember, I put the powder here on my hand, rub it into the puff. Now, I don't want to smear this around. Close your eyes for a chance. And I'm just going to press the powder into the color. And then lightly dust off the excess. That sets the makeup. The last thing that I want to do is I want to add a little bit of blood on here. I like the blood paste because I can put it there and it's going to stay. So I'm just going to take a little bit of blood paste, put it in here, put it in here, and there. And you can add a little bit of trickling blood or you can use a Q-tip and some water and mix it in with the blood paste. And that's what I'm going to do here. I've just got some water on a little sprayer and I've got my Q-tip here. But I'm just going to take this. And I'm going around where it's swollen, you see that? To give it a little bit more of that illusion that it is flowing over a swollen edge. I can even tap it around here. And if I want to add a flowing blood, you just take some liquid blood. I wonder if this has a minty flavor, doesn't it? Yeah, maybe. Could be. Oh, it smells minty. And there we have it. It's just painted on. There's a little bit of shadow, a little bit of blood paste, a little bit of flowing blood, some water, and it's all set. You've got a little 2D cut on there. It looks 3D. It'll photograph well. It's easy to duplicate. It was fast to do. That was probably, what, five, six minutes, and you have a nice cut there. All right, we're going to get into some 3D effects, which are pretty cool. We're going to have some fun with this. We're going to be using some new materials that are used in films today. It's called Third Degree. It's two-part silicone. I like it a lot. It's actually kind of replaced the standard of mortician's wax. We used to make old cuts and stuff out of wax. Mortician's wax, which was used for filling in cavities and stuff on dead people where they had issues on uh, the mor in the morgue or, you know, when they were dead, if they had dents or holes or whatever, they would fill it with mortician's wax, cover it with makeup. We would use the same thing on a set, but the problem with the soft wax like that is you would ding it or dent it and it was ruined. Also, in high heat situations, it would just melt right off. Then they had nose putty and stuff like that, which was a little bit tougher, but still the same thing. If you stretched it or pulled it, it was ruined. And if you bumped into something hard or if somebody touched it or scraped it, it was ruined. So now this is a two-part silicone, and you mix both parts together, and it creates a rubber, basically, which you can touch and mess with and play with and do all kinds of funky things we won't talk about. But it's, <laughs> it's a platinum cure silicone, it's medical grade, it's safe for the skin, and uh, it sets up really quick. So this is what we're going to be using. There's a word of caution, though. It's a part A and a part B. If you cross-contaminate A or B, you'll ruin the entire batch, and this stuff is not cheap. But it has saved many lives. I'll show you how, actually, right now. So a few things about Platinum Cure silicones. You can't use latex with them. So no latex sponges, no latex gloves. Although I've got latex gloves, they're fingerless. I can get away with this shit. Because I'm cool like that. <laughs> the other thing is you want to make sure that you thoroughly clean off any materials you're using to mix them. Okay, so you don't want to cross-contaminate these two things. So I like to use uh, separate mixing sticks 
when I'm working with them. That way I can mix them together. And I do it on a wax paper palette. I'll show you how I do it. You don't need much of this stuff. A lot of people will tend to take out too much, more than they need. What I do is I take out, this is part B, it's the colored part. And I'll just put that right on there. I can flip around and use the other end, but I won't even chance that. And I cap this up immediately. This way nothing can happen to it. I'm going to take the part A. Scoop that out. This is a new tongue depressor. Take the part A out. It's equal parts A and B, so I just kind of judge that by I. That's cool. And I close that up and put it away. This is a stainless steel spatula. I'm going to take the two parts and mix them together. You don't have a lot of time, and the warmer it is, the faster it sets up. It's pretty warm in here today. Also, if it's really cold out, you can accelerate the time with a blow dryer. You want to make sure you mix it really well, because if you don't, you'll have areas that don't set up. I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to press this right into Giles' forehead here. Right along here. We want to make kind of a big gash so you guys can see it. Now, his body heat is also going to help set this material up. So what I'm trying to do is get it on here as fast as I can and get the edges smoothed out as quickly as possible. Another trick for this is alcohol. Close your eyes, please, Jeff. Alcohol will keep it from sticking to your fingers. Also, using a stipple sponge, black stipple sponge, and some alcohol, you can press in some texture to this, which will help take away shine. I'll also use alcohol on my tongue depressor or metal stick to help drag it along and create a big cut. Now one thing that I like to do is try and make this meaty looking so I will pull it as it's setting up so we can get more of a big nasty laceration going. You can just relax your forehead. I got a little more hair that's not set up so I'm going to add that so I can have a bit more of a flap of skin here. So now that I got that cut exactly where I want it, I get that hair out of there so Giles can keep it. I'm going to take this simple sponge, close your eyes please, some alcohol, and I will go ahead and press it around the cut. What it's doing is it's actually pressing texture into the cut, so it's like a skin texture. And also it's going to help take away a little bit of the shine. You'll see that happening. And that's just from texture. Now it's starting to set up, which is good. Like I said, I've worked in cold weather, and I've had to be doing this in front of a space heater because it was taking so long to set up on the poor actor's face. And it's actually a chemical reaction that's making it happen. It doesn't really dry. So a blow dryer, it's not the air blowing on it that helps, but actually the heat from the blow dryer. So warming it up. In other situations, if it's too hot, bringing the actor into a controlled temperature environment, air conditioning, if you don't have an air conditioner room, Go ahead and bring them into an air-conditioned car or a van if you have one of those on set that you can do this work on. Also, if you really had to, you could refrigerate your components for, you know, like an hour or so before you had to use them if it's really, really hot. And you can see how that shine is coming down just from me pressing this texture in. And we get a little cut on there. Okay, as you can see, it's just a little bit lighter. The silicone's set up, and it's a hard rubber, and it will move, you can see that, and flex, and you can raise and lower your forehead giles. It's really good for the actors. They don't have to worry about it. It'll stay on. In fact, on the movie The Collector, I had a large laceration on the lead actor's forehead throughout most of the movie, just like this. 
One thing that we're going to do a little bit differently is we're going to use an alcohol activated palette. Um, this is the Illustrator brand. There's also real colors. There are all kinds of things you can get at friends. Uh, Matthew Mungle, WM Creations. There's all kinds of people that have these alcohol activated makeups. They're all good. Um, I've used them all. They stand up to perspiration and sweat, and they work well on silicone and skin alike. So I'm going to do some of the same tricks where I use a little bit of red. In fact, this kind of deep red here, this magenta color, hey, it happens to match the rubber mask grease paint and the cream colors I was using already. So we're just going to go with that. I take a little bit of alcohol. This makeup is dry. No makeup comes off unless it's been activated with alcohol. And you can see right there, boom, already. I'm going to mix a little red in with that because it's too purple for me. So I'm going to take this and you can thin it down like a watercolor. In fact, you don't want too much color. Too much color is too much. And we can just add little dots of color and blend it out with my finger onto that silicone area. It's the same technique as we did before, only this time there is a 3D cut. So it's going to work in conjunction with that. Now I'm going to go into the cut. So I'm going to use a blood kind of color and some deeper reds. That's right in here. Sometimes with the alcohol you really have to work it in there to get the color going. And I'm actually going to come in here and I'm going to paint in into that wound, the red. One trick that I like to do that helps with the realism is I actually extend the color beyond the silicone wound that I put on there. And I'm going to go ahead and just take that and I'll just extend it right past that. And it helps sell it because you don't see the edge. I'll go right past that too. So we've got that cut working right beyond it. Now what I want to do is even deepen this more but I'm going to paint this onto some of the edges here and get it up onto there. This way I'm making use of that sculpting that I did, that, that extra flap of skin I put right there that I want to use and really work it in. But I can still deepen this cut even more with a little bit of black. So I'll take a little bit of black. I'm still using the same brush. This, this isn't a small brush, but I'm using the flat side of it so I can actually get in there and get some detail. And right now I'm not, not too much black because I don't want to obscure all that wonderful gore I got going on in there. But I want a little bit just for depth. And I'm putting it in the deepest part of the cut, and you can see how that helps. Now one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to take a lighter red. It's just a red color. Using the same brush again. The cool thing about the alcohol activated makeups as well is it's really sanitary because you're using a 99% alcohol to activate your makeup, which makes it sanitary. It's, it's basically Purifying, well not purifying, what, the, what would be the word for that? I don't think. Sterilizing. Steri exactly, thank you Giles. It's basically sterilizing the makeup and the brush at the same time. And see right here I want to make this a little meatier and a little bloodier. Now on this edge up here, it's still a little pale for me. I want to add a little bit of flesh tone. I'm going to go ahead and use this color alcohol-activated alcohol palette Blah. just on here to throw a little bit of color on here, not too much. And I'm just going to do it in spots and dots because that silicone is translucent. Sometimes it's a little too translucent. And this will catch the edge. And you can see how we have a wonderful cut there. It's 3D. Go ahead and turn your head a little bit, Giles. We haven't added any blood yet because I want to show you guys. Turn your head again this way. I want to show you something else. One of the nicest things about this is we can poke it. It can interact. 
It's water resistant. Ooh, look at that. It's like a ducking mouth. He's got two mouths. Hello, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to eat you. I need stitches. Ah, ah. Okay, now we're gonna add some blood. <laughs> That's fun stuff. <laughs> we're gonna take blood paste. I love the blood paste. So I throw the blood paste in here. Now we want to make this meaty and nasty. So I throw the blood paste in there, but one thing I always like to do is just hit it with a little bit of water. Close your eyes, Jones. We're going to hit it with a little water and let the blood paste kind of do its thing to flow into areas and stain and do stuff. We can also take fresh blood, which is a liquid blood. You can make your own, you can buy your own. But we just get it on there. Now the water in the skin kind of makes it a little more believable. It sets into the skin a little bit. And you get a little bit of that kind of faded, kind of I've wiped it, I've been wearing it for a while, I'm sweating kind of look. And see, there you have a nice big gash. Every guy's looking for some good gash on his forehead. Now, here we go. And you can see it still moves. It's great on camera. You can hit it. It's not going to mess it up and it's going to stay. This is really what we're using to create out of the kit cuts and lacerations on sets, on movies today, on music videos. When you see this stuff, this silicone material is great right. for doing it. So just to kick this up a notch, I'm going to add a little blood paste in there for depth. Just right in there. Close your eyes for me, Giles. A little water just to freshen it up and give it a gloss. And we've got our cut. Like I said, this is what is used primarily nowadays on film, television, music videos, uh, you know, sets. It's great stuff. You can do all kinds of cuts, bullet holes, big cuts, small cuts, all kinds of stuff. Burns even with this stuff. It's resilient, holds up under water. I've been under rain machines with it and showers, all kinds of stuff. It's great stuff. Now I'm going to show you some old school type stuff, which can do some really gory effects. And you can also do it on the cheap, which is cool. We're going to be using our old friend, latex. We're going to use latex and paper towel. So for paper towel, it's going to be mimicking our flesh. What I like to do is rip the paper towel. You don't need a whole ton. A small ton works. A crap load. And I like to feather it out a little bit so it's got an uneven edge on it. And then if you've got two-ply, I don't know if i got two-ply here or not. I'll pull that across. Now we're going to do a slit throat effect on him just with the paper towel. And I'm going to do that right here. And I'm going to use latex. I'm going to use latex as my glue and as my skin material. So I've got some liquid latex here. Ooh, it's kind of crusty looking. Pull some of that off, and I'm going to dump that right onto there. Just take a little bit of latex. This is a sponge. You can use a Q-tip or sponge, whatever. And we're going to take the latex and stipple it right onto Giles' throat. Giles is Giles, whatever. <laughs> However you say that. And then we're going to take our paper towel. And we're going to lay that right into latex, and then we're going to stipple more latex on top of that. Now this is doing two things. One is it is gluing it to his throat. It's actually doing three things. It is also blending it into his skin, especially on the bottom where I am blending it. You notice I'm pulling it down and kind of blending it into the skin. And the third thing that it's doing is it is absorbing into the paper towel and actually rubberizing it because the paper towel is absorbing the latex and then it's going to dry and rubberize. I'm going to blow dry this right now. Okay, we're going to go ahead. We're going to do our second layer. We I blue dry that to get it set up. So we're going to do two layers. I like to do anywhere from four to six layers of latex on this. And I'm going to put this one down. Now, while the second one's going, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the top flap on. So in order to do the top flap, I'm going to go ahead and just put some latex on here to glue the paper towel on. 
we've got uh, I've got a little flap here for paper towel. This is a, a little bit thinner piece. I'm going to go ahead and separate the plies. So go ahead, I'm, I'm separating the double plies there. Now notice that straight line. I don't want the straight line, believe it or not. The straight line makes it harder for it to blend in. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of rip that up so I don't have an exact straight line. I'm going to go stick that just right into there. Oh, I need some more latex because that's drying up. Take some latex. Stick that right in to the latex. Stipple some more on top. A little more latex there. Put a little center section there. And then we'll do another section over here. And last but not least, over here. And then I'll stipple some fresh latex just over the top of that. And a little bit beyond to blend it into the skin. Now once again, I'm rubberizing the paper towel with the latex. I'm gluing it to his skin with the latex. And I'm blending it with the latex. While I'm here, I'm just going to throw another layer. It's kind of layer number three down here. Just while I'm there. Got a little latex on that shirt. Hope you don't mind. Nope. Okay. No, no. Otherwise, I was going to have to find you a new shirt. Mm. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to blow dry this. Before he moves around too much, we're going to go ahead and powder that. Because latex can also be used as a glue, and it will stick to itself. So I just have to find that damn powder puff. Where have I put it? Okay, I can't find the damn powder puff. So I'm going to use a sponge. You can do that too. And just put that into my palm. I'll use this makeup sponge here and powder the latex. What that will do is that'll keep the latex from sticking to itself so he can move around freely. And also, it's going to allow me to apply makeup to that easier. And I'm actually rubbing it in fairly vigorously. And I'll touch that and make sure that we've got powder all over. So you can move your head around, Jazz. Cool. Notice latex is stretchy, so it will flex with the skin, which is cool. Now I'm going to use a little bit of makeup on here. I'm going to use, uh, this is red rubber sponge. Um, clown noses and stuff are made out of it. I like it for rubber mask grease paint because it doesn't absorb as much of the uh, castor oil out of the makeup as say a regular makeup sponge would. And I'll just tear a piece off like that so I can apply my color on here. And I'm going to use rubber mask grease paint, which is specifically designed for going on top of latex rubber. So I'm going to find a base color that's kind of close to Giles. And I'm looking, and this one here seems kind of close to Giles. I'm going to scoop that out with my palette knife. One of the things I love about the wax paper pellets, and that's why I use them, is you can just toss that and start over right anew. Now this sucker's covered in paste blood, so we don't want to waste that. We'll put more paste blood up here. How about that, Giles? I like more. You are bloody, bloody, more bloody, more bloody. Oh, oh. We'll give you a herpy. Just one herpy right there. And we'll put a little, yeah, right there. Okay. Yes. Who have you been making out with, huh? All right. Who cares? You. Uh, no, oh, it was. <laughs> so I'm going to clean off this palette knife here so I can scoop out some of my color from the rubber mask grease paint. Okay. So I'm going to take this color. It doesn't take a lot of color. Just a, a little dab like that is all we're going to need. One thing, sometimes you'll hear about people warming up makeup. Warming up literally means stirring it. Rubber mask grease paint has castor oil in it, which makes it go onto latex well and not change color. If you use a regular cream-based makeup that has isopropyl myristate in it, what happens is the latex absorbs all that oil, that isopropyl myristate, and the color will shift and change. And you won't get the same color on the skin that you do on the latex. Because of the castor oil that is in rubber mask grease paint, you'll get the same color on the skin, notice, as you get on latex. 
very important. And I will stipple this on because we want a blend of color. And I'm actually going to use a little bit more. You can even thin this out with a little bit of castor oil if you want to. One thing that you can do if you don't have rubber mask grease paint, you can take castor oil from the drugstore and paint it onto the latex that's already there. Let it sit for about a minute and then blot it off with a paper towel. You can even add a little bit of castor oil into your cream-based makeup and that will help things. Another thing about these red makeup sponges is they don't fall apart as easy as the white ones when using a thicker makeup. Also notice the motion that I'm using. It's called stippling and you stipple the makeup on. I'm not smearing or rubbing it. It's all being stippled on. And you can see how already just as one base color is going on and coloring this latex and Giles neck. Now as I'm looking at the neck I'm also checking the color because one color never quite does it. it it's just too flat. You have to have multiple colors on there. So I like to add different colors and I see yellows and greens and blue in Giles' skin tone that aren't being represented here on the makeup. So I'm actually going to go in and wipe off my palette knife and I'm going to steal a little bit of yellow rubber mask grease paint right there. I'm going to take my sponge and a little bit of that flesh tone and a little bit of that yellow and I'm going to go in here and just dots here and there not everywhere just here and there and that's going to help break up that color a little bit and get a little closer to Giles flesh tone and his face there. A little more yellow And he's even got some redness going on in his cheeks and stuff. I like that too. Now one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little blue in here. And you say blue and I'm like yes blue, freaking blue. Because blue adds just a slight bit of gray tone to the whole thing. So we take a little bit of blue, just a tiny bit. This is, you have to be careful with the blue. I'm going to add that in with the flesh tone. It's really easy to overdo it with the blue. So be very careful. With the blue, you just want to lightly go in here and there. And notice I'm just putting little dots, little dots of color. It's all about the dots. Then I'm going to flip the sponge over and blend those little dots. And you could probably barely see those little dots, but they're there. Notice how it just grayed out that color a little bit. It's not such a Barbie pink anymore. That helps. These are the things that really help to blend in your makeups and your color. Even though I know I'm going to be dousing this with blood in a minute, I still want the flesh tone to match. I'm going to throw a little more blue on A little more, just so it's not so pink, a little grayer. And then I take the clean part of that sponge and blend that in. Notice how that really ties it together. Blue, who would have thought blue would tie it together? But blue is the key. Now I'm going to powder this to set. Here's that damn powder puff, all right. Once again, powder into my hand, powder on the puff. I'm going to press it into the makeup, pat it. This sets the makeup so it doesn't move around. The makeup actually absorbs the powder and notice how it also makes it matte and dust off the sides. Now I'm going to show you a little trick for adding some beard stubble and some other colors into this to break it up a little bit. In fact, we call it a breakup. In order to do that, I'm going to use a little specialty brushes that I have. These are brushes that I use. Um, they're from a hardware store. You can just cut them down. They're cut with scissors on an angle. And that's it. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to throw some spatter of some light color on top of this to lighten this up. I'm going to use some 99% alcohol. Taking this rice color paper here and just close your eyes because I don't want to splatter his eyes but I'm going to splatter on some light colors right onto that and then tap it just to lighten up the whole thing and it also adds what's called modeling or mottling with T's 
and that helps break it up so it kind of looks like a raised portexture almost. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in a little bit of uh, greens because I see that green here. Remember I talked about greens. So I'm going to throw in a little bit of green. Not too much, I want to keep it really thin. So Jazz, close your eyes again. And you can notice, if you, I notice it right away, this green really helps match it to Jazz's skin tone. It's a little olive-ish. You can see here to here, I can see it right away. Hopefully you can too. I'm going to move around here for a second so I can get on this other side. Throw in some more greens, and then I'm going to throw some reds on top to tie into the flush areas of Giles' skin. This is a little bit of red, and this is going to help match up the tone of his cheeks. And I'm kind of light with it. And you can see, I'm going to put it right through there, and right down the middle of his neck where he would be flush, right down these side areas, these tendons here where he might be flush. And now we can see how that really ties in. Go ahead and put your chin down a little bit, Jazz. And he's got the greens and the reds, and it's all sitting to get together. I'm going to go ahead and rip open this cut now. Because it's alcohol-activated makeup, it doesn't need to be powdered. All right. Now, go ahead and lift your neck up. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to pull. Now, this latex is kind of stuck to Jal's neck a little bit, but that's OK. Come in here, I'm going to pull it away and rip into this. And I can even lift this up a little bit. and I'm like losing it. This looks so real. Go ahead and uh, mark it real quick, Ron. Okay, this is Cuts and Lacerations, take 13. All right. All right, now you can see I've ripped this open and separated from the skin. I was a little bit careful pulling it because you can actually pull on the skin. But you see how that pulls away. The next thing is to get some color in here. There's a cheap and easy way to do it, and there's a more complicated way to do it. Because we're doing this for the internet, I'm going to do it the cheap and easy way, just so you guys know. Also, the coloration, I see I want a little more green. So I'm just going to hit it with a little bit more green. You can always do that. I like to actually check the color of my makeup on set. When I walk on set, I check the color of it and under the lights that we're filming under. And I can see here, he just needs a little more green. And it's a light misting. But we're going to do the quick and easy way. Quick and easy way is blood paste. It's always quick and easy. We're going to take a big gob of blood paste. You ready for this, Charles? Mm -hmm. And we're going to just take this in here. I'm going to put it inside the wound and we're going to press the wound closed with the blood paste in there. Sorry, I know that feels funky. It feels funky on his Adam's apple. It's a little bizarre feeling. I'm going to just put a little bit on the edges. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to pull it onto the edges. So this is quick and dirty. Realistically, you can go in here with those alcohol activated palettes, of rubber mask grease paint, and you can literally paint in detail like an esophagus and veins and everything else. But for the purpose of this, because we are on for the internet, remember my little trick, I like to pull it a little bit beyond where we were. And now, I love the trick of the water, just to kind of spritz it on here, get it wet and juicy, run my fingers in there, get it all on the edges, and get a slit going there, and oh yeah. And we can even pull this down a little bit, get a little lapping there, cool. Now I can get my fingers up in there, you can see how nasty that looks. And John, let's go ahead and move your neck around for us. Twist it from one side to the other, lift your head way back, put your head down. Okay, so here we've got a nice juicy latex and paper towel wound as you can use. We've got silicone up here, we've got some 2D here, we've got some blood here, we've got a more in-depth 2D here. So go ahead and open your eyes, move around, let's see, wriggle your forehead, you can do all kinds of stuff. Giles looks like he's had shit kicked out of him, and just for a last, but a fun... No, ran out.
It's okay. It's okay. It's like he's it. still rolling. Yeah. Oh, that looks good. And that's it, guys, for another great episode of the Mad Monster Lab. Cuts and lacerations. They're sexy. They're hot. I love them. What? They are. They're sexy. Well, anyway, I want you to go ahead and subscribe right up there because we got new episodes every other Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. And if you guys have any questions about how to do any of these techniques, tweet this guy, at Mad Monster Lab. And I will answer you. He does. Also, check out the videos below. Previous episodes and cool effects, you can link those techniques together with the techniques that we've shown you today to make even greater effects. Yep. And if you have any comments, leave them below. And if you guys have any ideas about what we should call you guys, our audience, leave a comment below. I mean, when I was the host of Backyard Effects, I called you guys the Indie Moglers. What do you want us to call you? I want to call them Legion. Or, I mean, or something else. Just go ahead and leave a comment. You know. The damned come forth. Or, or the damned just leave a comment below. Hell's children. Minions. Disciples. Ah.